how to reduce giving fuel to the narcissist. Fuel is our lifeblood. Some people refer to it as shudder, narcissistic supply, far too long and does not convey what it does for us, or the ghastly supply, admittedly shorter but inaccurate. Fuel is any emotional response to something that we have said, done or caused. In order to understand it in detail, how it originates and your role in this, you should read my book, Fuel, What Makes the Narcissist Function. In fact, that book is a must-read in order to understand Fuel and to enable you to achieve your freedom from the narcissist. The pursuit of control and Fuel is behind everything that we do. If we cannot control an appliance and obtain fuel from them, this forces us to seek fuel elsewhere. Sometimes it causes an immediate withdrawal, and sometimes it may take time for this retreat to occur, but it will happen. If the provision of fuel is very low, infrequent, and or requiring it proves particularly difficult, this means that the narcissist will ultimately select alternative appliances for the provision of his or her fuel needs. Accordingly, keeping the narcissist away from you, keeping yourself away from the narcissist and thus cutting off the provision of fuel, is a key component of achieving your freedom from us. It will, of course, threaten our control, but then we will assert control over you by the third assertion. So we will always be able to assert control over you, but that happens in a way that means you're left alone because we withdraw. In our world, we still have that control over you, but we're not gaining any fuel from you. And therefore, as a consequence of asserting control by withdrawal and the necessity of obtaining fuel character traits and residual benefits, we seek them elsewhere. Result, you get left alone for longer periods of time. And if you do it properly, the effect is of it essentially becoming permanent. Yes, there is a risk of you being hoovered, but if your no-contact regime is total, they will not be able to get through. As I explained, therefore, cutting off the provision of fuel is a key component of achieving your freedom from us. The most obvious route to doing this is by implementing a total no-contact regime. If we cannot interact with you in any way whatsoever, we cannot control you that way, we must withdraw, and we cannot obtain any fuel from you. And this absence of fuel means it's less likely, all else being equal, that we are likely to try and hoover you in the future. Therefore, striving for total no contact has to be your aim always. However, what of those situations where total no contact has not been achieved or maintained? Well, first point is, get it put in place. But what about those situations where there is interaction between you and the narcissist? How do you manage those situations so you provide the least amount of fuel? Let me make it very clear that what follows in this video is not a guide to allow you to interact with the narcissist with low fuel provision. No, you should always go to the position of total no contact. This video is about where there are basically legitimate exceptions to total no contact. And let me make it clear, in effect, there are only two. Most of the time, the excuses that you use for why you can't put in place no contact are just that, excuses, driven by your emotional thinking, and you should be able to put it in place. There are only really two instances where you have interaction with the narcissist that cannot be helped. In all other instances, you can implement no contact. It may be difficult. It may take time. You may find it uncomfortable, but it can be done. Therefore, the purpose of this article to explain to you how to reduce giving fuel to the narcissist should only be used with regard to these two legitimate exceptions. The first one is the ambush. You may have moved house 
Block numbers, change numbers, move jobs, jettison certain risky social groups, and put in place various measures, which has resulted in a solid no contact. Well done. Even then, you may just happen to bump into the narcissist walking down the road, at an event, or possibly somewhere where you never possibly expected to meet the narcissist. Other than live as a hermit in a cave in the mountains, you cannot legislate for this part of your no-contact regime. And it is not your fault that you have been ambushed in this manner. The narcissist, of course, may have calculated to catch you out in this way, or it may just, in most instances, be a coincidence. But either way, you have just experienced a face-to-face -face meeting with the narcissist. And therefore, it is necessary for you to reduce giving fuel in those circumstances. And I shall return to that shortly. The second legitimate exception is, for instance, in relation to co-parenting. Let me make this clear. Legitimate exceptions are very, very few and far between. This is not keeping the narcissist number in your phone and not blocking that number in case there is an emergency. That is not a legitimate exception. This is not attending the same gym at the same time in days that you know the narcissist will be there. You can make changes to bolster your no-contact regime in that regard. Legitimate exceptions would include remaining in a job where the narcissist also works there, pending your departure to a new job as part of your no-contact regime, or a transfer to a different site. It could be argued, of course, that you could just leave the job immediately to achieve no contact, and yes, that is an option, and one which should also be considered, where you are serious about achieving a robust no-contact regime. But if there is no immediate job to go to, you don't have savings and you have a notice period to abide by, then you will have to remain in a situation where there is a risk of contact. That is a legitimate exception. Legitimate exceptions also cover co-parenting with a narcissist, for instance, where there is a court order compelling that co-parenting has to take place where there is interaction between you. Usually, you can avoid doing that. My assistance package, How to Co-Parent with a Narcissist, explains how you do that. You'll be able to find that in the menu bar at narcsite.com. Legitimate exceptions also cover attending court, where the narcissist will also be there. You are compelled to attend. Remember, even with the legitimate exceptions, this does not give you a pass to engage freely with the narcissist. Indeed, there are still many things that you can do, which means you can maintain a very high level of almost no contact. But those are matters for a separate discussion. This article addresses those very, very few situations where contact arises with the narcissist so that you give no or very little fuel. I reinforce that you cannot use this article in order to repeatedly engage with us and think you can do so in a manner which will not have an adverse effect upon you. That is emotional thinking. If you keep on engaging with the narcissist, you will be visited by the devil's pitchfork. Your emotional thinking will surge and you will end up losing insight and resistance. It is important that you understand that the most dangerous interaction with us is any direct physical interaction with us. Why? 1. The largest amount of fuel you provide to us comes from direct physical interaction. This is because the words you use, the tone of those words, your body language, your facial expression, the look in your eyes, the gestures you make, all combine. All of these strands come together to provide us with very large quantities of fuel. Therefore, wherever possible, we want to achieve an interaction with you in person. Moreover, your emotional thinking wants you to interact with us in person, so your addiction gets fed the most as well. Two, you are far easier to manipulate in person because your own emotional thinking surges very high owing to our close proximity, which then weakens and removes your resistance to us far faster. It is easier to ignore an email from us, although it shouldn't be getting through in the first place, but far harder when we look at you, talk to you, give you that winning smile that makes you melt as our familiar scent washes over you. You may think that you can resist it, and some might for a time, but I have seen many fall repeatedly where there is a physical interaction with us. 3. Your politeness and decency mean you may well struggle to ignore us when there is a direct physical interaction. Your emotional thinking will cause you to say hello and at least be polite. And then the salami slicing begins as we draw you in once again. 
For, no matter how disciplined you think you can be in our presence, you may be able to keep your tone level, but your immediate emotional responses, facial expressions, the look in your eyes, body language, etc., do provide fuel, and are virtually impossible for you to stop. This is why grey rock doesn't work. You will also struggle to keep your tone level when you speak to us much more than for a couple of minutes. Accordingly, you are always going to give us some fuel when we see you in person. This underlines the need to avoid direct physical contact with us as a priority. So, how do you reduce the fuel that you give to the narcissist? 1. Apply no contact and make it total. Maintain it at a robust level. Use my work to achieve that. Consult with me. Let me take you through the five arenas to avoid interaction in those arenas. 2. If there has to be direct physical contact with the narcissist, then look to reduce the number of occasions when this can happen to an absolute minimum. Do you need to attend that parent-teacher evening at the same time, or can you organise a separate appointment? Can you stand on the opposite touchline to watch your child play sport? Do you really have to attend that meeting where the narcissist will be? Can you avoid it, send someone else, provide input in writing, or listen in and contribute via a telephone conference call? Can you be seated on a different table to the narcissist at the event? Can you alter your attendance at the staff canteen so you do not go when you know the narcissist is there? Yes, you may resent having to make these adjustments, but they are worth doing so. In order to minimise the risk of providing fuel and keeping the narcissist interested in you at a heightened level. Remember, we want direct physical contact for the reasons I mentioned earlier. 3. If direct physical contact occurs by ambush, apply go so and get out and stay out. Walk away from us and say nothing. Don't look upset, frightened or worried. Many people think that if you walk away from us, then we will think that we have won. Yes, we will tell people that. I saw Anne yesterday, but she just scurried away from me like a frightened mouse. But that's just the facade. If you ignore us and do so with the rea any reaction other than walking away then this wounds us massively, and we hate it. Accordingly, should you bump into us somewhere, then your priority, your priority is to get away from us. Just walk away, walk off, make an excuse about being somewhere if you nearly need to say something, pretend to need the bathroom, pretend to take a call, whatever it takes so you can get out. Four, if you really, really cannot get away immediately, then you should do so at the earliest point. In the meanwhile... Talk to other people and not us. This will also wound where this is possible. If you have to talk to us, keep your tone neutral, avoid eye contact. Talk about neutral topics or topics which do not give much away about you. Remember, we're looking for fuel but also information about you which we can use. Accordingly, talk about travel, the journey to wherever it is you are, the pop star whose concert it is, something you've done recently which you do not mind revealing to the narcissist and will not be used against you. Do not ask the narcissist how he or she is. If they want to talk, let them and look unfazed. The more they talk, the more you can concentrate on zoning out and not providing reactions whilst planning your departure from the vicinity of the narcissist. Avoid expansive and sweeping gestures, pointing, gesticulating, fist-waving, holding your hands up, etc. These all provide fuel. Either hold your hands together behind your back or place them in your pockets, hold your bag or place them flat on the table and keep your hands in that position. Having something to hold or touch and tell yourself you need to keep hold of that position or item until you are away from the narcissist. Resist all attempts to attack us in some way. Whilst you may be dying to tell us what a bastard we have been or to put us straight on one of a hundred things, you'll only end up losing your discipline and giving us fuel. We will win. 7. If the narcissist has telephoned you and caught you out, put the phone down straight away. Don't tell us to go away. Don't ask questions. End the call straight away. 8. Where there has to be some form of communication with the narcissist, either convey it through a third party, thus this removes the fuel almost entirely because they are the words of the third party and not you, unless the third party makes reference to you, which they should avoid, or do so in writing. Writing should be the only method of communication where there absolutely has to be such communication. For example, with regard to parenting arrangements, by placing the communication in writing you achieve the following. You give yourself time to weed out emotive language and thus fuel. Speaking does not give you this edit function, nor does being in our presence. You have written something of evidence which can be used at a future point. You will be briefer. If you do provide fuel, you will only provide a small amount, 
as the written word provides us with the lowest amount of fuel that can be provided compared to other methods of communication. Thus, aim for no interaction with us. If there is an ambush interaction, get away as quickly as you can, and if you cannot, govern your responses as described earlier until you can make your getaway. For other interactions, reduce physical ones to the lowest possible level and use written communications instead. By doing this, you will reduce your fuel output, raise the hoover bar, and starve us of what we want from you. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.